everyone. Welcome back to Unicorn Dust Designs. If you are new to my channel, hello, my name is Sammy. I love doing thrift flips. I love working with wood and I love trying new things. I am not scared to try anything and everything when it comes to crafting and creating. So if you think you'd be into that, then hang tight and let's go ahead and get started with this video. I thrifted this beauty for $7.99 and 50% off. And although I did love the look, I thought I could sell it a little faster if I created a stone look with this. I also liked that um, kind of like mildewy look that was on here. So we're gonna carry that out later. I'm gonna take Gravel Road by DIY. This is the lightest of all the grays that we carry and I'm going to mix my salt wash with it. And for those of you that are new, salt wash is an additive to paint and it is gonna create beautiful texture. So I always go in with a chippy brush and I am stippling this on, but then I'm gonna show you that as I start doing this, I created, this is gonna sound weird, but I start slapping it, okay, yeah slapping it. I know it sounds weird, but I show you right here, it does create a different texture. So the next time you're playing around with your salt wash, just, just slap it on your piece, literally like slappy, like slappy jaws. What movie is that from? I've said this before. <laughs> so I'm going to carry that all the way up to the bird. And when this dries down, you guys, it is going to give it the most gorgeous stone look and I love it. It turns out so gorgeous. Now that it is dried down, so you can see letter or gravel road is on the left and gravel road is on the right. Sorry, gravel roads on the left, letter press is on the right. So very different from each other. I've been trying really hard to paint discs so I have a reference. All right. We are going to bring back those that little bit of green that was in the piece originally. So I am taking water, a tad, tad bit of fancy farm girl, and I am going to apply this to the stone finish we've created. And I'm gonna take my little water bottle. I got this from Dollar Tree. It's in like the travel pack section. And I am going to spritz that down. This is gonna take a little bit more of like the green look away and give it a more natural look. I will say, however, as I started moving more towards the top, um, I was liking how it looked more when I allowed the water to drip down a little bit. It one, made the green a lot lighter, and two, I think it made it look a lot more natural because if this would be sitting out in the garden, it's probably more natural that it would drip down that way. So I made sure that I carried this all the way up to the bird, making sure it settled kind of like in those natural kind of grooves, like in the cracks on top of like the bird wing. And I love how this turned out. Next, we are gonna grab DIY's Clear Wax. Again, I do carry all these products on my website and I am going to put that over our entire piece. This is going to clear our piece and then it's gonna help us with our next step. Now, cover your ears if you don't like the N word, but we want to leave our wax moist. The next step that we do, we want the wax to still be moist. We are gonna take dark and decrepit powder. And at first, I use my little like brush with it, but I found that actually going in with my finger and pushing it down into the clear wax made for a more natural look and it also deepened up that dark and decrepit dust a little bit more. So you can see right here that I start, I'm dabbing it on and then I'm also rubbing it in. And I also line the entire bottom with it as well. Once you apply all of it, go ahead and grab another paintbrush, dust off that excess dark and decrepit dust, and you are done. So you'll see as I got up to the top, when I started allowing the water to like saturate and drip down, 
I feel like it looks a lot more natural. And then you can see towards the bottom where I wasn't doing it, it's a little heavier. But either way, I think this completely transformed this piece and I think it's absolutely beautiful. This next one, I buy these boxes. If they are under $3, they're coming home with me because they are absolutely so easy to transform. You can put molds on them, transfers, paint them. I mean, options are endless. We are going to take White Swan and I probably didn't need to do this step, but I will be using decoupage paper and I always want my paper to pop on top of whatever surface I am using. So we are gonna use one of these new decoupage papers that are new to my website. I believe this one is called Cherry Blossom. Now I'm going to basically take the entire bottom half of this paper because I want this to look continuous, that it is like wrapping around this box. And what was perfect is see those like fold lines? Each one of those lines created four little squares and it fit perfectly on my box. So I just had to cut where those lines were and it was absolute perfection. So I'm gonna take my liquid patina, which is our decoupage medium, and I am going to do a pretty heavy coat because this has a lot of texture like wood grains in it. And then I'm gonna lay my decoupage paper on. And y'all, you can teach an old dog new tricks because I don't know why it has taken me so long to try this plastic wrap hack of pushing down your decoupage paper with it. But, um, I I'm obsessed. Like there was so much texture in this box that I knew I needed to really push my paper down. So I tried the plastic wrap and sure enough, it did not rip my decoupage paper. It made it so nice and smooth. So, um, this will definitely be at my craft table going forward. All right, so once that is dry, I'm gonna sand in downward motions to get all the excess off. You guys make sure that decoupage paper is dry before you sand or you are gonna rip your paper. Now we're gonna go around the box and I'm just trying to match up the, the images basically. Um, and I'm gonna do that all the way around you will be able to see in the next frame that uh, it just looks continuous and looks so good and you don't have to do that each side could totally be different um, but you guys know i am like ocd about some things and this is one of them so i liked the image and like you could see this big um flower right there how i connected it on the other side so it looks like one image going around the entire box. Now that it's completely dry, you need to seal that decoupage paper on there. And this is also going to help all those places we sanded down on the corners and the edges. That is going to push down any like frayed sections, any paper that's lifting up, and it is going to complete this box. And y'all, we can use these boxes for everything, so do not skip out on them. I did a little vignette with a vintage book, some florals, a doily, salvaged wood. Um, you could see the bird's nest in there. So options are endless. People could use this as a planter. And I love that you can take these boxes, you could take decoupage paper, and you can completely transform a piece. Let me know what you think in comments. Hey guys, you know the drill. I'm just checking in on you. Um, I definitely think with this video and every video going forward, I am in the clean it out era of my life. Like I do not want all this junk in my space that I've managed to collect throughout. <laughs> I don't even want to say years, but it is years. So I am working so hard. I don't necessarily think like my DIYs have any kind of theme to them because I am just doing what is inspiring me. So I just really hope that you guys always leave my channel feeling like you took something away from it, that like it's bringing value to your day. 
because I always want to be teaching and hopefully growing with you. And I want to inspire you all the time. So um, I hope you're enjoying the content. If you are, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And all of my links, usually all of the products that I use are going to be linked down in the description box. So make sure to check that out. And let's get back into this video. This next DIY project was inspired by Sparks of Joy Studio. She is a new content creator here on YouTube. I will leave her channel linked in the description box, so definitely go show her some love. I'm going to take these old drawer knobs um, that I took from an upcycle, and I'm going to take some Dollar Tree picks. I've had these picks forever. I am going to use my heat gun on this little butterfly because it was all bent up and that heat is going to help relax those hard creases that have formed in the wings and loosen it back up. See that? Wonderful. Okay, so <laughs> this was the bigger of the three. There is a big one and then two small ones. I'm going to fill this up with hot glue and then for the bigger one, I actually stick two picks inside of there. And then this is when I realized, hello, these are rounded drawer knobs. So um, they don't stand up on their own. <laughs> you know, sometimes you just you gotta learn. So I continue on with it because I, I something sparked an idea and I am going to use these very wispy florals in the other two. And y'all, you can take whatever you want and this will be gorgeous. So I got this old piece of barn wood and I was like, we need these to stand up. So I took the old piece of barn wood and I am going to put all three of them on there. I couldn't nail them from underneath because the inside of the knobs have holes. So it wouldn't have made sense. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my tight bond wood glue. I'm going to put that in the middle and then put a circle of hot glue around it and push that on to my piece of barn wood. I'm going to do the same thing for the opposite sides as well. And I thought this is where, you know, taking somebody else's idea and making it your own. That's what's so fun about being creative because my style might not be your style, but you can take bits and pieces from them and make them your own. And I was really, really happy with how this turned out because it's not what I had imagined. I just thought I was going to use the knobs and be done with it. And then it turned into something completely different than Natalie's project. And I love it. We upcycled these old drawer knobs, a piece of barn wood, and it ended up being one of my favorite DIYs of this video. So let me know if you are going to recreate that one. All right. So we're going to use the same concept salt wash for this bird. But what I wanted to try differently was using the new painterly by DIY paints. Um, it is like an artesian paint. I don't carry the line. I didn't invest in it, but I wanted to try it out. So I ordered a few little sample colors from Debbie and that's what I wanted to play around with here. So I had this bird and it was supposed to be in my booth for fall and for whatever reason it sat in the basement forever. So I am using uh, letterpress gray and I am just trying to cover the bird in order to dull down that uh, brightness. So we're going to dip into Petticoat Pink and Love Language. You see that bright pigmented color on the right? That is a painterly color. And I mixed it in with Petticoat Pink because I wanted a brighter pink, almost to match that decoupage paper we used earlier. So this was my like subtle way of like <laughs> trying it out without going too bold and just using the paint on the bird. So this brightened up that petticoat pink a lot. You might not think it is as dramatic as it is, but I promise it is. So once again, we are going to be using that salt wash and mixing it in. I decided to use salt wash on this because I knew it would cover that base color a little better. And um, also I wanted to bring out 
texture on here. So I am stippling this on with this little brush. And you guys, it worked out because there is so many details in this bird, but I, fair warning, when you use salt wash, I always use my chippy brushes because the br I don't care about the bristles on those and they will get frayed. So like after using this brush, it is not nice and smooth anymore. The bristles are all frayed and they go in cuckoo. So heads up here, okay? So I'm going to follow this around the entire bird and we are going to let that completely dry. Because DIY paints are water soluble, I have not sealed this bird yet. I am able to just take a baby wipe and clean the eyes of the bird off with no issues at all. This bird actually had like really pretty glass like eyes. So I did not want to paint over those. All right. Now I'm taking love language once again, and I mixed it with some color and in my mind, what I thought I would do with this bright pink was outline the feathers in the bird, almost like, you know, when your wax sits in all of those details and grooves and it just brings out the details. That was my vision for this bird. But you, sometimes you guys know how it goes. Sometimes it just like, then you just take it a little too far and then you keep going. So then I start putting it on the entire wing instead of just underneath. And I carry that over the wing and, and start basically outlining it. And you'll see, it does make a difference in the paint color. <laughs> and this is where you guys, I'm like, okay, I'll outline it. And then I'm like, that does not look right. So let's paint the entire wing in this love language color. Sometimes you guys just got to go with the flow here. Okay. So that is what I am doing here. So you can see, I'm like, all right, we just need to paint this whole thing. I also do the tail feather as well. And then it comes together. You guys, I promise. Now I'm taking DIYs clear wax and I am going to seal all of this up. And I decided I want to lighten it up just a tad bit. And it looks a little funky right now, you guys, but this actually dried down to be very, very beautiful. I took some white wax. I just wanted to make like the little details in the rest of the bird pop a little bit more because I didn't want to put the love language on everything. Remember, we're just experimenting here. I wasn't ready to go like bold yet. And this is how our beautiful bird turned out. So you can see the brighter pops. It definitely brightened the petticoat pink as well. And I really love the pink. I know pink isn't like a normal bird color, but are most colors we use for things in crafting? No. So this was really pretty. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope you guys have a fabulous weekend with your friends and your family. And I truly do appreciate the time that you spend with me on these videos. Make sure to like and subscribe. That was like the weirdest spot. And uh, let's get back to this video. Blah. Okay. We need to change this to spring y'all. We do. All right, you guys, <clears throat> let me know down in the comments. What have you been working on? as far as your DIYs or like what's something that like you're currently into like when it comes to crafting like are you starting to now just dabble into decoupage paper are you really into creating with like molds or transfers or you know just whatever using napkins I mean tell me what it is that is kind of inspiring you right now and like getting you crafting I would love to know down in the comments I hope you guys are having a fabulous day. Thank you all so much for asking about the baby. Um, there's been a few people that have asked and emailed about a registry, but we are not doing um, a registry this year or this year, this time, um, because we don't, we're not going to find out the gender. So um, when friends and family are asking, we're just saying Amazon gift cards because that way if it's a boy, we can buy boy clothes and stuff. And if it's a girl, then we can use those gift cards to do diapers and wipes because I saved everything from Montgomery. So no uh, registry this year. Um, so yeah. All right, you guys. I hope you have a good one. Bye.